the co-director of On Doctoring at the Geisel School of Medicine. I'm an internist by training, and I have done uh, ID fellowships, but I've practiced primary care medicine for the last 25 years. It gives me great pleasure today to be your MC and host of this lovely and most important ceremony in medical school, the white coat ceremony. Let us start by extending a warm and rousing welcome to our guests of honor. We are proud to introduce the class of 2027. I am grateful we have 92. Can you imagine if we had 250 coming in? Be a long march. Okay, they are almost in. We need two chairs. <laughs> All right, let's give them one last big round of applause. <laughs> All right. You may take your seats and remain seated until we have you stand up again. This is such a beautiful space, but it is a tad warm. So I warn the students who are wearing coats, they can feel free to take their jackets off, especially once they get the white coat on it. It'll be a little toasty. And there is some water outside if anybody needs some. All right. Well, on behalf of the Dean and the entire Geisel community, we welcome all of you in attendance today, family, friends, well-wishers, faculty, to our beautiful Upper Valley. We are thankful 
that you have shared these incredible human beings with us. These caring, compassionate, and thoughtful students. We are delighted that you are with us here today to celebrate them. Although I suspect your newly minted M1 students are more happy than us that you are with them. Class of 2027, you have not simply survived your first month and one week of medical school. You have truly thrived. You have learned in on doctoring and one day of sim clinic so much that I'm almost ready to put myself in your care. Well, at least I'd let you take my blood pressure, for sure. <laughs> but joking aside, we know that you are all deserving and ready to receive your white coats. Medicine has long-standing rituals and traditions, and the white coat ceremony has become a really important one, and a symbolic one. It is, however, in the grand scheme of medicine, a relatively new tradition. The first white coat was in 1989. And as the story goes, this was at the University of Chicago, a clinical faculty complained to the dean that the students were arriving in the clinical space, perhaps not in the best of outfits. And they thought that covering it up with a white coat might help. That was utilitarian, important, but maybe not the best uh, idea. But in 1993, it was actually Dr. Arnold Gold, a beloved pediatric neurologist at Columbia, who co-created the white coat ceremony in its current form today. He really wanted to honor what you come into medical school with, caring, compassionate human beings, and have you remember that today and for the rest of your lives. At many white coat ceremonies um, at medical schools, they actually recite the Hippocratic Oath. We do not do that here uh, today. We save it for our graduation. But through Dr. Gold's efforts, today schools of medicine, dentistry, nursing, pharmacy, and other healthcare professions in the US, and in fact all over the world, have a white coat ceremony. It is also lovely for us to remember our own Dr. Joe O'Donnell, a former senior associate dean, and guys, um, he, was a he is a compassionate humanist, and somebody all of us who know him remember and love about him. And it was he who brought the white coat ceremony to Geisel. In a few minutes, Dr. Kershaw will talk to us about the significance and the symbolism of the white coat. But before that, I invite our dean, Dean Compton at the Geisel School of Medicine, to add his words of welcome. Welcome. Thank you. And, uh Good afternoon, class of 2027. Uh, I hope the first month has gone well so far. I don't see any scars or anything like that yet, so it looks good. Um, let me start by extending a very warm welcome to all of your family and friends who are here today and joining us. Um, this is a really important ceremony to mark the entrance in, to mark your entrance into the medical profession, and I'm really pleased to see so many of you joining us to mark this occasion with them. Um, our students may be uh, your partner, may be your son or your daughter or your niece or nephew or grandson or granddaughter, whatever your relationship, I would like to emphasize your support of them is incredibly important and we are incredible, incredibly grateful for your support of our students. Um, they're embarking on a journey which is, is, is pretty intensive and, and your support will be incredibly important to them as, as they go through their, their medical training. And for those of you who are at the uh, luncheon this afternoon, um, we are committed to ensuring that they uh, graduate as the highest caliber physicians possible. So I sincerely thank you for that support. I also would like to have you look around the room, particularly here we have how many faculty and staff we have joining us. We are all committed to your success and to seeing you become the best physicians you can be in both the art and the science of medicine. So we're committed to you and I want to make sure you take note of how many people are here in support of you today. So to our students, a good time to take a deep breath. Um, a month has passed since the first day of orientation, and I think it's really good to take a moment and, and uh, take a deep breath and 
and do some reflection. And so I now literally mean take a deep breath. So everybody inhale and exhale. Excellent. So as many of you know, I'm an, a very avid hiker. I take advantage of our local uh, trail system here as well as going off trail sometimes. Um, it's really good exercise for me and I find being in nature is very restorative and, and helps me uh, as in, in my mental health as well. Um, and thanks to a couple of your classmates who measured my blood pressure yesterday, I, I re realized that I need to be hiking more often and probably doing more than just hiking to take care of my phys physical health. Anyway, I, indulge me for a moment because I'm going to use hiking as a metaphor here, but and I, I would say I, I think that standing at a trailhead is, is very much an, an apt metaphor for orientation where you were a month ago. And when you're standing at a trailhead, or when I would be standing at a trailhead, I'm looking at the map, I'm, I'm uh, looking at the topography, I'm looking at the distance, all of these things you can, you can look at and, and understand, but you haven't taken a step yet. And at orientation a month ago, you were looking at the curriculum, you were looking at the map of that curriculum, phase one, phase two, phase three. Um, you were learning about student affairs, the student services that we have, all of these different things, but you hadn't started yet. So you were standing at that trailhead. And as we meet today, you're in a very different place already. It's only been a month, but you're on that trail, you're on that path, and I'm gonna, I'm curious, do any of you remember that first day of orientation when I said that the pace is going to be quick and perhaps quicker than many of you ex have experienced before? Do you, do you remember that? Okay, now it's pop quiz time. How many of you remember anything that I said on that first day of orientation? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't remember a thing. Uh, I appreciate your honesty, actually. <laughs> um, I'm going to review a couple of those themes with you now because I think it's still important and as important then as it is now. Um, with the hiking metaphor, you're on that trail, you're moving, foundations is moving fast and um, maybe really fast. And I, to, to quote my colleague, I, I hope you got your affairs in order. And, and you know, you've already now added on doc onto that, so you've got multiple responsibilities to, to, to attend to. Um, but today is different, and today we should actually pause and take a moment to, to use that deep breath that we just shared, um, to take a moment and reflect on just a couple of things that I think are really important. One is that I really hope that you've started experiencing the very real power of teamwork. Um, we're intentional in the curriculum about using team-based team education, and it, to me it's very important that that teamwork extends into your whole life, and that uh, as you're on this journey, as you're embarking on this educational journey with us, that you're not alone in that journey, and you shouldn't, feel, uh, you shouldn't ever feel alone in that journey. You've probably felt that teamwork from your classmates, um, and I, I just, I think I'm very confident to say that that sense of teamwork with your classmates is something that's only going to grow and evolve over time because you're going to get more and more into the, to the curriculum, and, and you're going to work more and more with your peers over time. So lean into it, rely on that team, rely on our our student services, rely on our faculty, rely on our staff, rely on your peers to help you. We we it's. It's incredible how much capacity people have to help others. Your team isn't just your, your classmates, your team is all of us. So the staff and the faculty, and I would say that includes here at Geisel, at Dartmouth Health, at the VA in White River Junction, and at all of our clinical partner sites. You're gonna experience a very warm and, and comforting um, experience as you go to these different locations, and I, I think some of you may just be starting to grasp how we fulfill our roles in supporting you and, and helping you as, as teammates in, in this journey. Um, and as I shared at orientation, we're committed to your success. We are, we are here to help. We help you through the curriculum, we help you for extracurricular things, and we help you in, in other ways through student, student services. Today, we are honored to formalize your entrance into the medical profession with a profound symbol, and that is the white coat. And in a moment, Dr. Kershaw will give you the, the, some history of the white coat and its purpose and significance. Um, 
the symbolism for the white, of the white coat and the person who, who wears the white coat includes characteristics such as purity and integrity um, and cleanliness and many other attributes that are ascribed to the medical profession. I wear a, a, a white coat to, to signify what in my pro professional activities in, in the laboratory uh, about integrity and, and um, in the scientific endeavor. You, you have immense power. Each one of you carries immense power to positively impact other people's lives. And that power is only going to grow as you continue in the curriculum. And, and you're going to gain knowledge and skill through the curriculum that is going to increase your power. And I want to make sure that as you go through this journey, as, as your power I expands and grows, that um, you use that power in a way to help people's lives. And if in doing so, as you embark on this journey, it turns into a lifelong devotion in the way you conduct yourself. And, the way, and if, you're, if, you, if you follow that path, and if that's the trail that you follow, then you, you will change the lives of an extraordinarily large number of people. So on behalf of all of the faculty and staff, we are honored to, to welcome you to our community at the Geisel School of Medicine and also to the medical profession. And so now I want to turn the podium over. Thank you for your attention. I want to turn the podium over to uh, Dr. Colleen Kershaw, who will discuss the significance of the white coat. Dr. Kershaw. Well, again, I want to welcome everyone. Um, I met some of your family members earlier today, um, but for uh, the students that I haven't met yet, hopefully I've actually met all of you. I am an infectious disease physician as well as the director of the coaching program. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about what the white coat means. So we all know that we're here today to really celebrate the beginning of this remarkable and what will be a lifelong journey, the journey that's going to transform each of you from the person you are today, the lay person, into a person who feels, acts, and thinks like a physician. And we really hope that this journey is going to shape you into a compassionate healer, innovative scholar, empathetic preventer of disease. The white coat that you're about to wear holds deep meaning. It's really more than just a garment. It's been one of the most recognized symbols of medicine actually for centuries. While the coat started out as a protective garment against daily messes and grime of clinical practice, and eventually actually building on the work of Louis Pasteur's germ theory, it was thought to actually protect from disease and, and keep uh, the practitioner clean. It has come to really signify the trust that society places in physicians, the faith that patients will have in your care, and the commitment that you're making to uphold the highest standards of ethics, integrity, and professionalism. So today, as an infectious disease physician, I can tell you that we now actually recognize that white coats may be carriers of disease uh, through infectious particles. And we, in truth, use them uh, less often in clinical settings, especially in situations where there are highly contagious infections. This is a reflection of the practice, and I uh, emphasize practice of medicine. We must constantly learn and evolve. And yet, the symbolism of the white coat really remains the same. It remains meaningful to both physicians and patients alike. As you put on the coat for the first time today, remember that it's really not just a uniform, but it's a representation of your devotion to putting others before yourself and a reminder of the true privilege that you have been given and earned to be a part of people's lives during their most vulnerable moments. In the pockets of the coat, you will carry not just maybe a stethoscope, maybe instruments, but also the hopes, fears, and stories of countless lives that you will touch. So now on to some history. In the time before white coats, dating back to the origins of medicine around 400 BC, the primary symbol of medicine and healing had actually been the snake and staff, or the rod of Aesculapius, a reference to the Greek god of medicine, who was called upon in the first line of the Hippocratic Oath. 
So as Dr. Pinto Powell said, we don't say the oath um, here today, but I'm gonna share a little bit of it with you. There are many versions. But the first lines begin, I swear by Apollo the physician, Asculpius the surgeon, likewise Hygieia and Panacea, and call all the gods and goddesses to witness that I will observe and keep this underwritten oath to the utmost of my power and judgment. The oath, which is considered one of the oldest binding documents in history, goes on to outline the ethical conduct expected of all physicians over the past 2,500 years. These include things like to first do no harm, to treat the sick to the best of one's ability, to preserve patient privacy, as well as to teach the secrets of medicine to the next generation, which is what we're here for, and so on. In the healing temples of Aesculapius, the non-venomous stakes that now bear his name were introduced when the temple was dedicated, and they were actually encouraged to crawl around freely on the floor where the sick and injured slept. The shedding of the snake's skin symbolized rejuvenation and hope of new life. The snake also captured the dual nature of the physician who deals with life and death, sickness and health. You will see that this symbol is still present on the Geisel shield sewn onto your white coat. Despite the ancientness of these symbols, as Dr. Pinto Powell talked about, the white coat ceremony itself is very new and was first held in 1993 at Columbia University sponsored by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation. She mentioned that their mission was to instill a culture of respect, dignity, and compassion for patients and professionals, and to nurture and preserve the tradition of the caring physician. As envisioned by Dr. Gold, the white coat, in addition to being a symbol of hope and the bond and trust between a doctor and a patient, is also intended to symbolize a bond between student and teacher. It is described by Dr. Gold as a gift of faith confidence and compassion, and as a symbol of trust that we as your teachers and mentors believe that each of you possess the traits and ability to carry on the noble tradition of doctoring. And so today, with your families, friends, faculty, and peers as witnesses, we are honored to present each of you with this symbolic gift sponsored by our alumni, and we welcome you into the profession of medicine and Geisel's School of Medicine. Congratulations. I'm now going to turn the podium over to class of 2026 Geisel student, Titi Mabogonje. Hello, everyone. My name is Titilayo Mabogonje, or Titi. I'm a second year student here at Geisel, and I'm truly humbled to stand here today. I want to start by saying to the class of 2027 words you've probably heard many times over the past few weeks, congratulations and welcome. The word welcome comes from Old English, wokuma, which is a noun meaning a desired guest. Class of 2027, you are the class guys hold desires. We want you here and we need you here. I'll spend the next few minutes offering a simple invitation to reflect on the past allow yourself be in the present, and can offer my perspective, one of many, on what the white coat might mean for your future. If you all will indulge me, please close your eyes. Take another deep breath. Let any anxious thoughts fall to the side. Let your tongue drop to the floor of your mouth. Let your muscles relax and take a moment to remember what this is all about. Envision the journey that brought you here, the people, the situations that carried you here, a friend who signed you up for an EMT course, the curiosity about the human body you allowed follow its course, the personal experience that made you resolve to help those in need so others won't suffer or so you might come alongside them in their suffering. Remember the loved ones who are dear and true, who even on your worst days looked you in the eye and said, I love you. This journey is hard, ain't no doubt about it. But remember what brought you here and I promise you it will be worth it. 
If your eyes are still closed, feel free to open them, and thank you so much for reflecting with me. Now I'd like to share my experience from the past year, some things that make, might help you thrive through your first year. First, enjoy every moment. I've been learning this past year how to make sure medical school remains an important part of my life, but doesn't completely take over my life. So I've learned to say that it's okay to close the book and say, I've studied enough today. I've learned to say no to certain things so I can be present in the spaces that I do occupy. I've also learned to say yes to some things that are new and challenging. For example, as an inexperienced climber when I moved to the Upper Valley, it was with great hesitation, trepidation, and fear that I said yes when my roommates invited me to go climbing with them. And look at me now. Still a bad climber, but at least I know what it means when people say send it. <laughs> Secondly, take ownership and agency of your experience here. Geisel is your school now. You can bring the change you want to see and create the community you want to be a part of. The reason I survived my first year is because I fostered and made relationships. So when the answer to the question, how are you, isn't I'm fine, I know I had people I could turn to. It takes a village to raise a child. And here you are, surrounded by the wealth of 90 plus villages. So be there for each other. Have fun together. Teach and be taught. Hold space for different opinions because not everyone thinks like you and not everyone believes what you believe and that's healthy. So learn and relearn how to listen over and over again. It will be one of the most valuable skills you have. Take ownership and agency of your time too. It's a precious resource and that means you should not be ashamed of spending some on yourself because you are worthy of it. Concerning grades, my biggest piece of advice comes from one of my favorite movies, Three Idiots. If you have not seen it yet, let it be your unofficial pre-work to do so this weekend. <laughs> the protagonist, Rancho, encourages his friends, don't run behind success, chase excellence, and success will come running behind you. For me, that's looked like not obsessing over a certain grade, but through studying and through seeing test results and reviewing tests, letting the, keeping the end goal of serving patients in mind. And finally, I'll say a word about the ceremony we're all here for today, the white coat. As you know by the fact that you just got to med school about a month ago, white coat doesn't make you a doctor magically overnight. But even when you do become a doctor, a white coat does not guarantee you'll have all the answers. In my opinion, in some ways, a white coat means that you have to work even harder not to let medicine usurp humility's place in your life. Because both now and then, saying the words, I don't know, will take humility. Yet it is so important. And yes, you will get to experience the joy of healing diseases, but you will also be faced with the illnesses we do not yet know how to treat. There will be wounds that you can fix and that will be great, but there will also be injuries that are too deep for physical hands to touch, not only in your patients, but in your colleagues too. So when drugs, technology, and medical knowledge fail, what's left then but to love? To figure out how to show compassion even in hard situations. That is our responsibility, and that is what I believe we commit to when we don the white coat, both physically and metaphorically. Again, class of 2027, congratulations. From this day on, friends and loved ones will bombard you with questions, starting with, hey, you're going to be a doctor, right? Then proceed to, uh, to explain a set of symptoms you may or may not have learned much about, and say, so what do you think I should do? People will give you their time their trust, and their hope. So whether your response to their questions is, maybe you should go see someone who's finished med school about that, or it sounds like you have a sore throat. Have you tried cough drops? I want you to remember this. Healthcare is a right, not a privilege. But being in a position to provide care to others is a privilege, not a right. 
respect that power. And though I started off by explaining that welcome means a desired guest, I hope you realize that somewhere between Dr. Myers telling you to get your affairs in order during orientation and surviving your first two benchmark exams of medical school, you're no longer guests here. You're part of the family. So class of 2027, welcome home. It is now my pleasure and privilege to introduce Dr. Kristen Casal. She is a graduate of class of 1994 and um, the president of our alumni council. Okay, well that was a tough act to follow. <laughs> Sheesh. Oh. Good afternoon, everyone. And Congratulations, class of 2027. You've done it. You've gotten yourselves into medical school. You've worked really hard, and I applaud you for that. But this is just the beginning. Are you ready? Are you ready to answer the Campbell question, is there a doctor in the house? You might be too young to remember this, but during my childhood, if someone suddenly collapsed on TV or in a movie, or fell ill, a concerned character would call out, is there a doctor in the house? Without fail, a good-looking young doctor would breath, breath, bravely step up and save the day. You couldn't watch a week of television without seeing a doctor portrayed as an elite, highly skilled, brave, and benevolent healer. Doctors are the real-life wizards, the everyday Jedi. Now, TV is fiction, but in real life, this is indeed what we make here at Geisel Medical School. Professionals who can step up and answer the question, is there a doctor in the house, with a definite yes. And how do we do this? How do we create such medical superheroes? Well, here at Dartmouth, we have faculty that can only be described as the best. They're not only leaders in their fields, tremendous clinicians and researchers, but most importantly, compassionate, down-to-earth people who love to teach. In every instance, they will be available to you. They'll lay the education out before you and lead you in the direction you need to go. But of course, you have to do the work. Look around at each other now. Seriously, look around. Look around and prepare yourselves. The faculty are gonna show you the way, but it's the people in this room, the ones sitting next to you, who are going to get you where you're going. You'll spend almost every day for the next two years with these people. You're going to build an esprit de corps of shared interest, talent, service, dedication, and love. First, you'll bond over the academic challenges, the volume of material you need to memorize, the kind of surreal aspects of dissecting a human body, the intimacy of doing a physical exam on a patient, the anxiety and hopefully relief of surrounding your written exams. You'll also bond over your maybe brief moments of relaxation when you take advantage of your beautiful surroundings and recharge. I know you might not feel like you have time to enjoy the great outdoors, but you have to. Put your anatomy book down for two hours. Go out there to those velvet rocks. There's a trail there right down the road. It's beautiful, and I promise it will rejuvenate your soul. And it'll help you study better. It's all a part of the Dartmouth experience. All these things, your courses, your working environment, even your leisure activities, will help you come together as a band of brothers and sisters <clears throat> who share the unique struggle of becoming a physician and are made the stronger for it, together. Why do I stress the togetherness? Because you will need each other. In your third and fourth year, 
You'll start your clinical rotations, and that's when you really start to feel like a doctor. You and your resident groups will be in charge of the patients on your service. You'll be responsible for making decisions about their health and about their lives. It'll be up to you to figure out how to heal them. You'll draw their blood, you'll clean their wounds, you'll change their dressings, you'll talk to them, you'll make them comfortable until they're well enough to go home. There will be no regular hours, often not enough sleep. The cafeteria might be closed when you finally get a minute to yourself. Vending machines with stale hostess cupcakes will look like gourmet takeout. There will be small victories. You got the ABG in front of your attending on the first try. Hooray. And there will be setbacks. You didn't know the right answers on rounds this morning. You'll make mistakes, but you're gonna learn so much. You'll learn how to put in NG tubes, Foley catheters, IVs. You'll learn what to do during a cold blue. And you'll learn that you thought you knew how to wash your hands, but you actually don't. <laughs> Did you know there are like 10 steps to washing your hands before you go into the OR? And I have a tip for you. Remember this. Before you wash your hands and before you walk into the OR, make sure you put your mask on, because if you don't, you're going to have to turn around and go do it all over again. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. <laughs> oh, yeah. And people will vomit on you. <laughs> and there will be blood and some stool. There will be life, which you will help deliver. You will see miracles. And there will be death. I had my first experience with this in my third year. I'm going to try to get through this. I took care of a 12-year-old boy with lymphoma on a pediatric ward. It was March of 1993, and I remember him filling out his brackets for the March Madness college basketball pool. North Carolina was the, fav was the favorite, and he was a huge fan. He was a super sweet kid who loved his basketball. He went home while I was still on the pediatric service, but I saw his parents in the hospital a few months later. They told me he wasn't doing so well. And a few days after that, I heard that he had died. He would be 42 now. Things like this will happen. This is life in all of its divine mercy. You will need to talk to someone about it. Don't bottle it up. You can't do it on your own. Medical school is hard on many levels. There will be times when you don't think you have what it takes and it's gonna get overwhelming. Whose shoulder will you cry on? To whom will you dare to whisper your own fears, hopes, and dreams? Again, look around and be there for each other. You are in this crucible and facing these challenges together. The shared experience of your third and fourth year rotations will bond you to each other even more than your first two years. And you'll find in each other a friend and colleague on whom to rely, who will listen and lift you up and help you face the challenges of medicine now and in the future. Now let's talk about the future for a second. The friends you make here will stay with you beyond medical school. They will understand better than others the unique challenges you will face down the road, like maybe the difficulty of balancing your family life with the pressures of a practice and being a good physician, or maybe the heartache of having a patient die on your watch or performing a surgery that doesn't go so well. My sincere advice to you is to take the time and make the effort to nurture these friendships and pay attention. It goes so fast. It might not seem like it while you're sitting there for hours memorizing which antibiotic kills which strain of bacteria. And it sounds cliche, but it's true. So try to notice things. I actually recommend keeping a journal of your time in medical school I didn't do that, but I really wish I had. You'll be doing a lot of really cool things for the first time, and it would be helpful to your future selves and the next generation to jot down how you feel so you can look at it later and remember. Being a doctor is an amazing thing. Medicine is a career that gives you purpose. It's intrinsically rewarding, and that's probably why you chose it. You know that you'll find satisfaction and happiness working for the greater good. But it's more than that. To be a physician is a privilege and a huge responsibility. You are all going to become part of an elite team. 
dedicated under oath to the ethical service of your fellow man, sometimes in matters of life and death. So how will you ultimately answer the question, is there a doctor in the house? Once you get through these next four years, I'm confident that each and every one of you will be able to answer that question with a resounding yes. Welcome to the Dartmouth Family of Physicians. Thanks very much to Dr. Cassell. Um, hi, I'm Dr. Allison Holmes. I am a pediatrician. I am Associate Dean for Student Affairs. To echo Dr. Cassell's remarks, you, class of 2027, you are now a family. You're a team. And a unique tradition we have here at Geisel is that our entering class works together to write their class mission statement. So we're very pleased to share this tradition today with all our family, friends, guests, faculty, staff, and with each other. So I'd like to invite up Alexis Ganey, Chelsea Leversedge, and Erickson Nicholson to lead the class in reciting their mission statement. The Geisel School, School of Medicine, Medicine at Dartmouth, Dartmouth Class of 2027, recognize the privilege and responsibility of donning the white coat. We vow to value the sacredness and sanctity of healing entrusted within this profession. As students and lifelong learners, we pledge to learn collaboratively and hold ourselves to the highest ethical and professional standards. We will continually seek opportunities to refine our practice of medicine beyond science by treating mind, body, and soul. As healthcare professionals, we will humanize the patient experience through emotional connection built on respect, honesty, vulnerability, and trust. We will leverage our diverse life experiences and unique perspectives to provide access to equitable care serve the underserved, empower those with illness and disabilities, and speak on behalf of the voiceless. As active community members, we strive to be advocates of justice, agents for change, and vessels for innovation, both within the clinic and in our communities. Through research and service, we commit to improving the quality and delivery of healthcare locally, nationally, and globally. As mentors and educators, we will stand on the shoulders of those before us to pave the way for subsequent generations. We will support teamwork through interdisciplinary teaching with an appreciation for the contributions of all involved in the care continuum. We endeavor to facilitate relationships with our patients, empowering them with the autonomy to participate in their care. Above all else, we aspire to leave a tangible legacy of compassion and empathy that will change the healthcare landscape towards a patient-centered future. We, the class of 2027, vow to build upon our training and remain humble public servants. From today until our coats are hung, our calling and purpose will forever be our patients, their stories, and our journeys beside them. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, the class of 2027. A beautiful statement. Really love that last paragraph. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, receiving the white coats so or being coated. On Doctoring is a course in medical school that starts from week one. And it is to teach the art and science of being a doctor to our newly minted students to teach about communication skills, how to take a beautiful history that you actually listen to the patient and to examine a patient in a competent way. And the course is taught by a dedicated cadre of faculty 
who are here today to quote the students. You will notice that some groups will have two faculty quoting them, and some will have one. Note that all groups have two facilitators. It's just that some of them are working today and could not make the ceremony. They send their deepest congratulations, and they are sad, the ones that couldn't be here. So there's a couple of housekeeping things that I want to um, mention in addition. Students, the Geisel alumni, and you've heard a lot about them, you felt their presence from interview days onwards, uh, from the second look, from the open houses and dinners with them, uh, orientation, you received a white coat from them, you received your stethoscope from them. And today there's a very special something in the pocket of your coats, don't look now. A note from an alumnus to you specifically. We hope you read them, cherish them, and save them. And it is our hope that that same alumnus would write you another note at graduation. It is a lovely, lovely tradition, and we hope you enjoy. Family and friends, please feel free to photograph your student as they come forward and receive their white coats. There will be an official photographer, but if you want to come forward, please do so. I will call each undoctoring group to rise and come up to the stage to be coated. After receiving your coats, please introduce yourself at the podium as you were previously instructed, then walk over, sign the mission statement, and return to your seats. Are we ready? All right. Will the undoctoring group of Drs. Price and Karp rise and come to the podium? My name is Andre Romero. I'm from St. Petersburg, Florida. Hi, I'm Jennifer Offill Hagwood, and I'm from Missoula, Montana. I'm Alyssa Fairman, and I'm from Acton, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Hunter Hobson. I'm from Huntington Beach, California. Hi, I'm Pranav Prabhula. I'm from Nashville, New Hampshire. Hi, I'm Taylor Miller from Bel Air, Maryland. Hello, it's your family Peggy Ta Obinyako Mifrigana. My name is Peggy and I'm from Ghana. Good afternoon, my name is Will Rathbone from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania.
Hi, my name is Tiffany Shen, and I'm from Kaohsiung, Taiwan. Hello, my name is Aiden Wright, and I'm from Farmington, Maine. Okay, you may be seated. Can the undoctoring group of Dr. Sanders and Silverman come up? I'm Henry Landers, and I'm from San Dimas, California. Hello, my name is Alden Herring, and I'm from Carlisle, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Sarah Chaco, and I'm from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Hello, my name is Laura Cooper, and I'm from East Greenwich, Rhode Island. Hello, I'm Isaac Satz, and I'm from Palo Alto, California. Hi, I'm Lucas Cusimano. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Hi, I'm Andrew Bostwick. I'm from Salem, Ohio. Afternoon, my name is Chelsea Leversedge, and I'm from Denver, Colorado. Undoctoring group of Dr. Daly and Dr. Roberts. Hi, my name is Cynthia Siego. I'm from Jakarta, Indonesia. Hello, I'm Wade O'Brien, and I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Lexington, Kentucky. (laughs) 
Uh, hi, I'm Bert Prince. I'm from Camden, New Hampshire. Hi, my name is Connor McLeod. I'm from Miramar, Florida. Hello, my name is Amari Ramon Harris, and I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Good afternoon, my name is Edan Cohen, and I'm from the great state of New Jersey. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Wacon, and I'm from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Riley Carbone. I'm from Underhill, Vermont. Hi, my name is Jesslyn Lee and I'm from New York. On doctoring group of Dr. LaRocca and Dr. Lindsay Miller come up. Hi, my name is Isabel Lobon, and I'm from Brooklyn, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Rowan Bresselsmith, and I'm from Denver, Colorado. Hi, my name is Alec Collado, and I'm from Cienfuegos, Cuba. Hi everyone, my name is Matthew Chen and I'm from San Marino, California. Hi, my name is Tejas Pramela. I'm from Boca Raton, Florida. Hi, I'm Sammy, I'm Ia, I'm from Louisiana and Syria. Hi, I'm Eliza Hurst and I'm from San Francisco. Zagula, I'm from Vienna, Austria. Can the undoctoring group of Dr. Gruntmanis and Dr. McWilliams come up?
Hello, everyone. My name is Arena Armand, and I'm from Newport Beach, California. Hey, my name is Mario Flores, born in Ecuador, raised in Rockland, California. Hi, my name, my name is Amanda Maxfield, and I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. Hello, my name is Joy Miao, and I'm from Wellesley, Massachusetts. Hello, everyone. My name is Ravi Singh Sandhu, and I'm from Tarn Punjab. Hello, my name is Alexis Gain, and I'm from Watertown, New York. Hello, my name is Erickson Nichols, and I am from Ordell, New Jersey. Hello, my name is Gustavo Antasana Quintela, and I'm from Madrid, Spain. Can the undoctrine group of Dr. De Grossa and Dr. Peltier please come up? Hello, my name is Corbin Dameron, and I'm from Charlottesville, Virginia. Hi, my name is Alec Fields, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. My name is Audrey Harold, and I'm from Thornton, Colorado. Hi, my name is Noah Kim, and I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and South Korea. My name is Minji Ko, and I'm from Boise, Idaho. Hello, I am Tui Fatupaonga, and I'm from Samoa. Hi, my name is Helena Steffens, and I'm from Los Altos Hills, California. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Xavier Takam. I'm from Bafusam, Cameroon, and Ottawa, Canada. Can the undoctoring group of Drs. Cochrane and Dr. Farrell please come up? Hi, I'm Caitlin Hunt. I'm from Wilmington, Vermont. Hi, I'm Nandita Casaretti, and I'm from Bow, New Hampshire. Hi, I'm Erin Kelly, and I'm from Wall, New Jersey. Hi, my name is Jennifer Shaw. I'm from New York City. Hi, my name is Chantal Sosa. Soy Dominicana and I'm from New York. My name is Luke McGowan and I'm from Kansas City, Kansas. Hi, my name is Tom Nile, and I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. Hello, I'm George Retaliata, and I'm from Bayshore, New York. Hello, my name is Jillian Elise Moran, and I'm from Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey. Hello, my name is Alexander Seal, and I'm from London, England. Can the undoctrine group of Dr. Rooney and Dr. Zug please come up? Hello, my name is Nevin Fowler, and I'm from Fort Collins, Colorado. Hi, my name is Isabella Marshall, and I'm from New York City.
Hi, my name's Dane Shermer, and I'm from Elliottsburg, Pennsylvania. Hi, namaste. My name is Iman Shatapa, and I'm from the beautiful country of Nepal. Hello, my name is Ayon Feolua Kolaoli, and I'm from Nigeria. Hello, everybody. My name is Eric Wong, and I'm from Chappaqua, New York. Hi, everyone. My name is Murray Bresnahan, and I'm from Marblehead, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Pietro Welke, so Brasileira, from Lynn, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Rebecca Smith, and I'm from Piedmont, California. Hi, my name is Daniel Rifkin, and I'm from Mawa, New Jersey. It's almost getting there. Can the undoctoring group of Drs. Matha and Dr. Knight please come up? Hi, my name is Sarn Abhijit Gole, and I'm from Cupertino, California. <laughs> my name is Jason Weiss, and I'm from Bainbridge Island, Washington. My name is Addie Marie Darling Mena, and I'm from Hyattsville, Maryland. Hello, my name is Colin McNamara from Hamilton, New Jersey. I'm Nalima Paletti, and I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Good afternoon. My name is Sam Euclid. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Hi, my name is John Marshall. I'm from Duluth, Minnesota.
Hello, my name is Trey Rogers and I'm from Hastings, Minnesota. I am Sophie Scalarud, and I am from Edina, Minnesota. Hi, everyone. My name is Karina Lukovitz, and I'm from Norwich, Vermont. Finally, the on-doctoring group of Dr. Hoffer and Dr. Ward. Hi, my name is David Abraham, and I'm from Sudbury, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Matteo Masco, and I'm from New York City. Hi, I'm Mary Basilius, and I'm from Burbank, California. Hi, I'm Mateen Bikaran. I'm from Tehran, Iran, and Green Bay, California. Hi, my name is Zofia Tishlak. I'm from Kensington, Maryland, and Poland. Hi, my name is Krista Collins, and I'm from Chatham, New Jersey. Hi, my name is Aditya Narayanan, and I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, my name is Isabella Solaroli, and I'm from Yorktown, Virginia. Hi, my name is uh, Benjamin Wang, and I'm from Fremont, California. Hi, I'm Daniel Weber. I'm from Marshfield, Massachusetts. <laughs> All right. Um, we didn't know. <laughs> I kept getting prompted to put the hand out so that you wouldn't forget and bypass us. <laughs> I couldn't stop smiling through this whole thing. I didn't know, so actually some of you looked more nervous than you did at your interview. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's just very hot in here, but I would love the class of 2027 to rise so we can give you a rousing applause. <laughs> Okay.
Okay. You may be seated for just simply a few more minutes. I want to end this beautiful ceremony um, and pick up on a theme that T.D. laid down of remembrance. And I'm going to read you a short poem. I promise you it's short. It's a favorite of mine by William Stafford titled, The Way It Is. There is a thread you follow. It goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder about what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread, but it's hard for others to see. While you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen, people get hurt or die, and you suffer and get old. Nothing you do can stop times unfolding. You don't ever let go of that thread. Life in medicine, that's the end of the poem, but life in medicine is not always going to be easy. We hope that the idealism, the symbolism, and the excitement of today's white coat ceremony stays with you through the joys and not so joyful days in medicine, not simply medical school. Wear it proudly, but with humility, as you were uh, reminded. And always, always keep the patient front and center, the human person at everything, the center of your focus and everything you do. No celebration, by the way, organizes itself. This ceremony came together through the hard work of our events coordinator par excellence, Tina Hoisington, and her dedicated helpers. So thank you for that big round of applause to all the folks from the Dean's Office, Alumni Engagement, Medical Education, Admissions, and Student Affairs for their support and contributions today for this lovely ceremony. Students, please remain in your seats for a formal photograph. We ask that guests please exit so we can get this organized quickly and release your loved ones to you. One final thanks, though, and a reminder before you leave that the alumni care and are part of this Geisel family. And an alum, Dr. Lucy, and the alumni team have put, forward, put together another gift for you today in addition to those notes in your pocket. And that is a book of anthologies for all of you to enjoy. So after the picture on your way out of the Rollins Chapel, please pick up a book and enjoy it. Thank you all for coming. Please enjoy the reception. And the reception is at the Hilton Garden in Lebanon. Wasn't that amazing? Oh my gosh, I can't.